I want to go to some Indigenous issues because I, I think we need to focus on this if we can, Nick Hatter, before we get to the end of the year because in the immediate aftermath of The Voice, the Prime Minister was put under question in the Parliament on the issue of the Indigenous Treaty, his Makarrata Commission, and he sort of duck shoved it. You know, he said, oh, the, the Indigenous leadership, I need to talk to them, they're all mourning, I'll come back to it, which, which he never did. So we know that the Minister, Linda Burney, says there's going to be regional and local voices. As I said, Makarrata, the Treaty Commission, is still in the budget. There's millions of dollars still allocated to it, doing work, despite the voice result. And the head of the public service, a guy called Glyn Davis, he's the head of Prime Minister and Cabinet, he's out there yesterday talking to a whole lot of Canberra bureaucrats saying, we're really going to keep pushing on with this. You know, we're going to push on with this idea of basically giving funding, budget money, to individual, local, regional, Indigenous bodies to spend because they think they could perhaps spend it better than government in Canberra. That might be the case, but it's like the voice never happened. That's right, Peter. And clearly the message hasn't got home that, that it wasn't just this particular detailed proposal or one detailed proposal people rejecting. It was a whole approach to Aboriginal affairs. It was the approach that said some people are separate, we're going to divide Australia by race and we're going to treat Australians as separate categories. Now, that, that was emphatically rejected. It could not have been clearer. And it's up now to the Prime Minister and his ministers to start looking for another way forward, one that hopefully will be more effective than the one we've been doing for the last 50 years. I mean, I think what Glyn Davis says about local decision-making over funding, or of course, you know, as Liberals, we kind of accept that that's always going to be better, that decisions are made closer to the ground, but it's just a Band-Aid. You know, we need a fundamental root and branch look at the whole way we've been going on Aboriginal policy for the last 50 years, this idea of separatism and separate development and, and just, you know, really refocus on, on, on getting results. In New South Wales, the, the Liberals up there, John Roskam, have walked away from a treaty. We've seen the same thing in Queensland. They earlier had a decision to support one. That's changed post-voice. In Victoria, though, they have not ruled out supporting the treaty. They currently do support a treaty. And we find out yesterday, backed in by the Victorian Premier Jacinta Allen, that they're going to have these umpires involved in treaty negotiations in Victoria. Well, they're going to pay these umpires something like $400,000 a year. Now, this is what you pay a judge. This is double what we pay most MPs. This is extraordinary. It's what we pay average Australians. It's four times the average Australian yearly income to a bunch of hand-picked public servants who are not particularly special, uh, who exactly, as you say, will not be exercising any judicial function that we can understand. It is exactly what you and Nick were just talking about. It's another example of how Labor governments, federal level, state level are ignoring the will of the people and what down here in Victoria the Liberal and National parties mm. need to do is make this an election issue. They need to communicate it, not run away from it and say that the Allen government here in Melbourne is ignoring the will of the people because of course as we know even in Victoria we voted overwhelmingly no to dividing Australians by race.